Thank you so much for keeping it why in the morning. This is why 254 if you're, uh, you're just joining us. We're just in time for the next conversation of the day. My name is Ram Aguko. It's all about awareness on infectious diseases this particular Tuesday morning. And today we're talking about health. And, uh, you know, we need to understand this, especially among the youth. Why do we have uh, an increased rate of infectious diseases among the youth? What do we do to mitigate it? What well, are the signs and the symptoms uh, that we should be looking out for? Well, this particular conversation is of interest to you. Remember, we are coming to you live from the Broadcasting House here in Arabi, Kenya. We're also live on our website at www.kbc.co.ke forward slash Y254. A warm welcome to you today. In this conversation, I'm joined by Dr. Lydia Atambo. She is a public health specialist. She is a medical doctor by profession, and uh, she has a very good uh, CV. Uh, she's a master's holder, a uh, master's in public health uh, uh, and uh, uh, he has, she has a MSc in uh, tropical and uh, infectious diseases. Huh? Thank you so much, Dr. for joining me. Thank you for having me. Hope you're well. I'm very well. And remember, you can be part of this conversation from wherever you're watching us from. The hashtag, as always, is Why in the Morning, at Ram Maguko, and that Michelle Ashira, at Y254 Channel is where you can find us. Head over to Facebook, drop in your comment on the comment section on Facebook as we continue this conversation, both on Facebook and on Twitter. This is all about awareness of, inf of infectious diseases, so make sure that you also ask your questions to the Dr. here. She will be sure to answer your questions questions as you continue with this conversation. Dr. Ari, um, tell us a bit more about yourself. Uh, 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 you, you are at AMRE? I work at AMRE. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm a research, I work in the research department mm -hmm. and I'm also the head of department in the community health department where we train community health workers. Now uh -huh. these are community um, personnel who go and help the community and teach them how to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. and how to prevent infections. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they, they bridge a very important gap between prevention mm -hmm. and treatment. So in between that, there should be knowledge mm -hmm. where you're telling people what to do and how to do it. This, this is like a form of pruning. After they have, they have left the institutions of learning, now they come to get more training in regards to how to handle uh, people on the ground. We actually have a course that trains people who are called community health workers. Uh -huh. And they, have, they should be stationed in the community mm. and they should be empowering the community. Mm. And they are the gap that will facilitate the implementation of the universal health coverage. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you, 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 you work in the research section. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm sure you've done so many research projects. Yes. Um, what are some of the findings that you've uh, acquired over the past few years that you've been uh, working in the, uh, at AMREF that have really caught your attention that we really need to uh, consider even during this conversation? Well, um, I'll just mention something about the COVID study because yeah. COVID is relevant to us now, mm -hmm. that as the youth, we should focus on getting our information about COVID from relevant sources, WHO, yeah. AMREF, Ministry of Health, you know, mm -hmm. there's, there's so much information in the internet that you might get lost People Googling and so get many things, conspiracy huh? theories. <laughs> yeah. So my message would be mm. go to the right channel, get it from the right source. The, you, 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 you've discovered that so many people are getting uh, mis misinformed in yes, regards to this yes, issue of COVID. Yeah. You know, people are afraid of getting the, the va <laughs> vaccine. Yes. When I go up there, they want to say, what if I am sick? What yeah. if uh, it, it, it has a particular side effect? Yeah. But that is not the case. Is there any connection between infectious diseases and, and, and COVID? And should, should, what should Kenyans be, be afraid of? Because <laughs> <laughs> so you're not afraid. Man. Yes. What I want to say is that infectious diseases are very many. They are huh. very many. There, there's bacteria, there's fungus. I will not get into it. But there are small, small organisms uh -huh. that are around us and sometimes can cause infection and the infection mm -hmm. can be mild you know like when you get homa that uh, that is also an infection so homa, the, homa is an, is, is it's an a form disease. of infection because if you mm -hmm. sneeze i get it you know yeah, if i'm yeah. near you you sneeze i get it mm -hmm. so there's a whole spectrum of conditions nearby that i mean there's hiv there's hpv there's covid mm -hmm. so all those are types of infectious diseases interesting interesting yes so 
so what we are here to say is that there are simple ways you can use mm. to ensure that you stay healthy. And, uh, and, and, and getting vaccinated is one of the ways. And getting vaccinated is one of the ways. You should not be afraid of doing that. No, but, but perhaps I should start by telling a story of the Spanish flu. You've heard of the Spanish flu? Yeah, I have, I have. Yes. So in 1918, they had a similar phenomenon like this one 100 years ago, mm -hmm. where there was a flu that just started and it was part of the COVID family. And mm -hmm. so the people there were wondering, why are people getting coughs and colds and chest pains? Mm -hmm. And before they could figure it out, it was during the war, they were taken to a concentration camp. Mm -hmm. So in the concentration camp, the infection spread. You know, when you're in an army, you're close together yeah, and you're training yeah. together. Mm -hmm. And that's how the infection spread. And the people in the military camp got scared and they were wondering, why are the young people getting sick? And so they called the parents to come and watch their young people. Mm -hmm. And that is how the flu that started small spread to the whole world. And uh -huh. it killed, it affected uh -huh. 400 uh -huh. million people, uh -huh. but killed 100 million people. So the question is, if uh -huh. this was a case that was similar to what we have now, how did they stop the infections? Exactly. Good how question. did the pandemic Good end? Question. And when you go back to literature, you, you will find that they used simple methods. They washed their hands. Mm -hmm. They started uh, physical distancing, social distance. You know, these things that we are being told, um, don't go anywhere if you don't need to go in. They didn't have vaccines then. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So 400 people were infected then, 400 million people, and 100 million people died. died. Now, Let's compare with now. Mm -hmm. So now we have COVID. We have 200 million people who've been affected and 4.5 million people who have died so far. So you can see that if you compare our story to them, there's improvement. Yeah, there is. Maybe we are washing hands better. Maybe we are physical uh, distancing better. Maybe mm. medicine has improved. Mm -hmm. But there's also the issue of vaccines. Mm -hmm. so and when, technology. And technology. So when you talk about vaccination, it is just introducing a bit of um, treatment that makes sure that your body is fully protected mm -hmm. from the infection mm -hmm. so that in case you're one of the few who will be adversely affected then you are protected. Now um, coming to today, yes. what are some of these infectious diseases that are actually even common even among the youth? Yes. Um, at a time like this we are in the 21st century, yes. we are, uh, I'm sure you've, you've seen so many people who are coming into your facility yes. you know, trying to uh, get help here or, uh, here or there. Yeah. You know, you've, have you come across some that are very, very common among the youth? Among the youth, we, we, I want to mention three. Yeah. And I'll start with, uh, of course, HIV. Mm -hmm. um, we are all in relationships. We are relational beings. And, and, and I don't, I've, I've, <laughs> I've, I've noted, you use the word, of course. Why, why, why the word, of course, Because we are, we are social human beings. So... It goes without saying that we are in relationships. It was but, expected. Yes. But do we <laughs> observe A, B, C, D? Uh -huh. Abstain, be faithful, use a, con a condom. Mm -hmm. You know, do we do those things? Contraceptives. So, yes. So if we do such things, then we prevent the spread of HIV. Mm -hmm. The second one I want to talk about is hepatitis. Um, everywhere I look at the youth nowadays, I'm still a youth, eh? I hope. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you are. Uh, uh, although we need to gauge that from your, from your age, you know, from your, uh, do you get that from age or looks? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so, but you look young. Yeah, so when, whenever I interact with the youth, I see tattoos nowadays. Eh? Tattoos? Tattoos. Yeah, they're very common. They're very common and, and they are spreading both in, in favor and in and, and glamour. So it is glamorous uh, to have a, a tattoo. It's a, it's a thing. It's a, it's thing. a thing. I don't have one, but <laughs> I, I have so many friends who have uh, tattoos on their shoulders, yeah. on their you know, uh, uh, elbow. But the thighs, question we legs. should be asking uh. is where are they getting these tattoos from? Is it? Are they from certified places? Are those places clean? Mm. Because tattoos, if they are done wrongly and from places that are not clean, then we get the spread of hepatitis, which is known to be the main, one of the main infectious diseases that causes liver cancer. So in fact, even in our repository of data, we are seeing a, a, an increase, a gen, an incremental rise in mm. the cases of hepatitis um, among the population. So there's a connection between a tattoo and liver cancer? Yes. If you that's, go that's to a quite place interesting. That, is not, that is not clean, and certified. So my message to the youth is, 
as as we stay updated mm -hmm. and and relevant even in terms of fashion please get your tattoos from places that are good and mm -hmm. certified yeah because that can be one of the channels that you can get infected with and the hepatitis uh, virus because now you you, you get some uh, reaction yeah you know it's a needle yeah. when you're doing the tattoo it's a small needle that keeps pricking and implanting the in ink yes and and getting this nice picture that you want mm -hmm. but in doing that there's uh, transfer of fluid, body fluid. So yeah? you, you've mentioned among the youth we have HIV, hepatitis, and do you know it, it different types of hepatitis? Yes, there are different uh, types. So is there any particular one that is yes, associated with hepatitis? Yes, hepatitis B and C. B, B and C. Yeah, uh -huh. D also, but those are B, C and D are the ones we are worried about. Mm. Any other infection that is common among the youth? COVID. Let us talk about COVID. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. Yes. Uh, so um, if, if you look at the uh, rate of infection, uh, in, in the country. What are the uh, measures that we need to put in place to reduce the rate of infection in, uh, among the youth and especially in Kenya? I want to say um, all the things we have been hearing from the Ministry of Health. Wash yeah. your hands, cough etiquette, you know, you cough properly, yeah. and, and physical distancing and social distancing. Um, but at this point, I want to address our leaders. Are we facilitating that? How many, what percentage of Kenyans have access to clean water? 60%. You, you, you feel like most of the work There's more to that be... can be done. Uh -huh. What percentage of Kenyans have access to toilets, simple toilets? 30%. Even as you talk about sanitation. Even as you talk about sanitation. So when we're talking about prevention of infectious diseases, there's, a, there's an impact that poverty um, plays into the equation mm. so that if we are not empowering our people, so that they're not living in poverty and living in a small space and then you talk about physical distancing. You know, it doesn't really work. So in the prevention of COVID, when you talk about physical distancing, people should live in a spacious environment, you know? So, so I want to talk about, first of all, as leaders, let us rise above and, and ensure that our people have good living standards. Then number two, of course, there's an individual element where we all have to take responsibility mm -hmm. and wash our hands mm -hmm. and cough properly and physical distancing and wear our masks mm -hmm. and stay away from physical gatherings, you know, things like that. Now, uh, you're saying so the, uh, our, our leaders play a big role. They do. Uh, in reducing the rate of inf uh, they in do. infectious diseases. Yes, they do. They do. Yeah. Um, looking at the economic stability of the country, and it's uh, a ripple effect in the health sector. Exactly. Um, is there a way that the common manaiji can be able to, you know, uh, cushion themselves? Uh, because COVID came, it affected everything, and uh, it has affected the rate of poverty in the country. And, uh, and you've cl uh, clearly stated that poverty has an effect on increasing the rate of infectious diseases. Yes. So. The truth is COVID took us by surprise, all of us. All of us. None of us were ready. Mm. Um, even the first world countries are grappling and trying to mm. develop policies as they're moving. Yeah. So, so I cannot, um, I cannot uh, claim that, that we, would, we should have been ready. Maybe mm. we would have made a few plans in advance, but it caught all of us by surprise. There's some people who say that strategic leadership ought, ought, ought to have played a big role here, you know, thinking ahead yes. and planning ahead. Yes, like I, I keep reverting to the Spanish flu. After that, after all those people had died, they created committees and subcommittees, mm, and they mm. were saying we need to be on standby because another pandemic, and that only lasted <laughs> 10 years. I mean, it's it, it very quickly. So, so in the quest to prepare for another pandemic, there can be burnout. Mm. But it doesn't mean that we cannot put the steps in place to ensure that our people are cushioned. Mm -hmm. So we are already poor and COVID, we have lost jobs. We, the economy has been affected. Tourism mm -hmm. has died, you know. Mm -hmm. So the physical distancing, these things that we do, you know, you go to a party and people make money off. Yeah, yeah so that has been affected. But hopefully we, we will rise above that. Uh -huh. uh, hopefully we will. Yeah. Um, one day we will see a reduction in the number of slums we have in the country. Yes. Because you are saying uh, we are talking about social distancing, yet Nikki, father, Ivi. Una salimia jirani. Ume 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 gonga ki ume gonga jikoni yamtu. Stovi me amuka chini na chai. Yeah. Um, 
Are there any recommendations that you'd like to give to the government in regards to uh, how the government can be able to help in this fight or improve, ways of improving uh, in the fight against uh, infectious diseases? I think the government response has been excellent. They mm. have done their best. They have um, put in resources. We have always been crying for more resources to be pulled into the health system. Yeah, yeah. So finally, everyone is on the health the system, evolution. which is excellent. Yeah. Um, they have partnered with the right partners. They are making the right policies and regulations. They are doing what they can do. They are, they are bringing in vaccines. It is our, now our responsibility to go and get vaccinated mm -hmm. because the vaccines are coming in. Mm -hmm. um, they are now coming in. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we should not be hesitant. Um, abroad, there's, the, a lot of people are getting vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Locally, we, only have, we are only at 3% that have only been vaccin fully vaccinated. Mm -hmm. So we can see that there's a lot that individually we can do to get vac stand up and go and get vaccinated you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. make that decision and go and get vaccinated uh, now um now that you're talking about people making that decision to go get vaccinated the youth play uh, a big role yeah. in this particular decision making yeah. because without them uh, i i fear the rate of uh, <laughs> vaccination could reduce if the youth don't, you know, uh, are not at the forefront. Yeah. If they don't uh, go forward and, you know, uh, get jabbed. Yes. Uh, for infectious diseases and uh, among the youth, do we have any uh, uh, signs and symptoms that we need to be looking out for as individuals that can be able to tell me that, hey, I think I have... Uh, an infectious disease and I need to go get checked up I need to get to uh, a medical facility and uh, seek medical attention what are some of these signs and symptoms of this infectious disease that, that we have been mentioning throughout this conversation so the infectious diseases are as varied as they come yeah so we can start with malaria you'll feel sick you'll vomit you'll mm -hmm. feel um, then you can have diarrhea if you have cholera dysentery you know mm. you can have if you if it's tb or pneumonia then you can cough mm. and you have chest pain if you if it's an std we are talking about herpes hiv then you have discharge and pain mm. on urination so so depending on the infectious disease that we're talking about, mm -hmm. the, the symptoms are as varied as they come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but so long as you feel unwell, mm -hmm. remember that um, what we look out for is that you get treated quickly yeah. because you can become a source of infecting someone else. Remember we said they're infectious. I sit here, I can give it to you. Mm. Some easier than others. What, TB, I cough, you get. Mm -hmm. COVID, I cough, you get. Mm -hmm. You know? If there's a mosquito here, it can spread malaria from me to you. Yeah. So depending on the method of transmission, mm. the sooner we can have more people protected, we will have what we call herd immunity. Herd immunity mm -hmm. means we are all in this room. COVID wants to infect people. But because you're protected and protected, everyone is protected, then what happens is it doesn't have anyone to infect. Mm. So when we are saying everyone should get vaccinated so that the pandemic can go away, we are looking for herd immunity. Yeah. The more people are protected, mm -hmm. the more COVID won't have anyone to attack. You know, which, which um, takes me to uh, wonder, what do, ha, 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 what should, uh, how should it be for people who stay in the asal areas, the arid and semi-arid areas? You know, we, are, we, we saw last week when the president declared the drought a national disaster. Mm -hmm. Is there a way that uh, the rate of infectious diseases in those particular areas can be mitigated? You know, now they have a double burden of, 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 of issues that, that make them prone to infectious diseases. They are mm. not nearby, so transportation to medical facilities... A problem. Is, yeah, they, have, they lack access to clean water, mm. poverty... So, you know, these are, now they don't even have food. And remember, food, when you eat well, your immunity is good. Yeah. When your immunity is good, you, you fight infectious but diseases. But now we have drought. Now you have drought. And, and they are, um, in between there, there are, there are vulnerable populations, pregnant women who should be breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. So what happens mm -hmm. to the children? What happens to the elderly? What happens to the pregnant women? So 
again, we, as a society, we should be supporting such vulnerable populations to try and reduce the impact mm. that infectious diseases would have on them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, we need to come together as, as a society. Yeah, because um, there are different layers of intervention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I saw, I saw the, Red, the Kenya Red Cross coming in, yeah. you know, trying to send aid there. Yes. Um, we, we, are, we are also go going to a time where there is a, a, a cold season coming up. The, uh, what are your thoughts in regards to this? Does that have an effect on the rate of infectious diseases during this time? You've seen so, uh, it's, it has been raining yeah. for, 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 for quite some time now. Yeah. yeah. So, of course, infections come in seasons. Mm. When you get into rain, then perhaps you can start talking about diarrhea and, mm. and such because the water is not able to be cleaned as well as it should mm. and there's runoff. So at this time, people need to be more aware. Yeah, so there's actually an increase in rotavirus. So, I mean, infections are seasonal. They come mm. in depending on the periods. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, if, if you're looking in terms of the period, there, is, uh, there was a time during the uh, COVID that uh, we had an increase in uh, uh, the rate of the uh, people who are not... Uh, right now, it's different. But there was a time that people were so afraid of uh, uh, getting the vaccines because they were talking about the underlying issues that were there. Which takes me to wonder, when someone goes to get the vaccine, is there a way that uh, you can be able to predetermine that I have this disease and I'm okay getting the jab? But, and for someone else to say that I have this, this disease and I'm not okay to get the, that, that, that jab. Are there particular infectious diseases that can clash? <clears throat> yes, with the so we have different types of vaccines, and there are some that um, are not too strong. So when mm -hmm. they come into your system, you, your body can handle it. But if you, if you know you have a fever or your immune system is compromised, usually when you have a fever it means there's an infection going on don't get a vac don't get vaccinated mm. because probably the vaccine will come in and might cause get you to become more sick before you become better mm -hmm. so we usually tell such people if you have a fever don't get vaccinated mm -hmm. but for all of us who there's no obvious contraindication for not getting vaccinated remember mm -hmm. when you were less than one year old how many vaccines did we get in fact, hey, if, you, so <laughs> <laughs> if you have a child who is less than one year, all you do is ask your boss for time off because you're always yeah, getting... Yeah, BCG, I don't know. Hey. Yeah, so vaccine many. one, two, three, four. And, and, and so the, the issue of the vaccine not being safe mm. is, 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 might, is not very true mm -hmm. because vaccines have been there. We have used them. Mm -hmm. There's an issue about fertility. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think Kenya has a problem of infertility. In fact, our mm -hmm. population is growing, mm -hmm. you know. So the vaccines did not stop oh, the I, ability oh, to, f to be fertile. You there know? is a, there's this particular uh, doctor. I am here to confirm if he is one. Mm -hmm. uh, but he was alleging that in the next 10, 20 years mm -hmm. uh, that the mortality rate will have been affected by the vaccines that we have received. Um, the the creation and, and development of vaccines is so stringent. It is, it is so tightly guarded and, and they keep monitoring the side effects, the adverse effects. It is so well monitored, those mm. vaccines are safe. Mm -hmm. And that's why we give vaccines to our younger children. Mm. The reason we vaccinate small children and not ourselves is because their immune system is vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So the only difference now is that COVID has come and we are all vulnerable, both the young ones and the and old the ones. Old. Yeah, so that's why we are saying old people go get vaccinated. So because maybe because mm. me, a big person, I'm being told to get vaccinated, mm. now you, it's creating confusion. and. So regardless of season, it is still okay. It is fine. Even for women who, uh, does it affect, uh, does hormonal changes? have yeah. any uh, uh, effects. effects on infectious diseases? Um, yes, hormonal effect. Like, for example, when you're pregnant, you're more vulnerable to malaria infection. Mm -hmm. Yes, and because your immunity, you, I mean, your body is hosting two people. Yeah. So everything is half-half, for half. lack of a better <laughs> description. Uh. So, so you're more vulnerable to a bit more infections, mm. but even they are being allowed to get the COVID vaccine. And... Of course, there are some who, who have been adversely, adversely affected, but most of the people are getting it and they are healthy and they are okay.
Mm-hmm. And uh, so, so for th- that, that is for women who for the, for the pregnant women. for the pregnant women and no other hormonal uh, uh, with changes. no other hormonal problems. Please get vaccinated. If you're old, please get vaccinated. If you're young, please get vaccinated. What we want is herd immunity. Once we have herd immunity, COVID will not have anywhere to latch. Now, I, I, I want us to bring this conversation to a close. Initially, you, you mentioned HIV. Yes. And uh, I was, uh, while, while getting to uh, know your background, I saw that you are, you are, so, you are interested in HIV prevalence. Yes. Um, you've, you've, you've done work in that particular field. Yes. Um, as we speak, so many youths have this tendency. You know, people, youths are not afraid of HIV nowadays. <laughs> they are afraid actually of pregnancy. Yeah. And, uh, what <laughs> is telling them is if someone can get pregnant. Yeah. Um, what would be your tip, some of the tips that you'd like to give that Kenyan youth who is watching you today in regards to, the, uh, uh, to this particular area of HIV uh, infections? What I want to say is that children are blessings. Mm. Um, you should not be scared of pregnancy. <laughs> according, <laughs> according to me, you should be very scared of HIV because once you get HIV, then you carry it for life. You know? yeah, yeah. You're going to the clinic every month, you're swallowing tablets. And then over time, the burden of the infection, which is HIV, and the drugs, mm. they overwhelm the body. Mm-hmm. So what I would say is um, ABC, abstain, be faithful, use a condom, you know. Um, again, it comes back to poverty. Or, mm-hmm. or is, it, is it society that, that it is okay to get a sponsor? Why are we getting sponsors? <laughs> I, I, do, I don't know. Perhaps, perhaps, <laughs> perhaps, it's, huh? it's, perhaps it's poverty. Perhaps it's, it's, it is what is the norm. It, it, it is luck, in a way. But if someone it, wants money, and someone they feel wants like money. I, I need someone yeah. who can give me. So even in that push of, of, um, of doing what we do, please be careful. Because HIV um, is, is a burden you will carry for life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it has serious ramifications. Financially, right. emotionally, mm-hmm. physically, it's quite draining. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's quite challenging uh, as a stakeholder um, to be able to spread the word out there for people to be able to understand how to actually curb the rate of infectious diseases. Yeah. Um, I want us to, have to, find, uh, to, to finish this conversation and I want to give you five minutes. I, no, 30 <laughs> seconds, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> 30 seconds. I have a final word. Uh, Speak to that Kenyan youth, that Kenyan is watching you, a parent, a mother, or a father, in regards to the uh, you know, uh, awareness of infectious diseases. What should be their take home? That thing that they shouldn't forget, even as they go through <coughs> their day-to-day activities. My take home is that because of COVID infection, I think we've been washing our hands more. What has also happened is that we've seen a decrease in the rate of infectious diseases. Colds and coughs, maybe because we are wearing masks, mm. coughs and colds, their real diseases have sort of gone down. Mm. So my message to you is that these things work. Let us wash our hands more. Let us uh, ensure that we are boiling our drinking water. Let us have safe food. You know, if you're preparing food for your family, wash it properly. For the youth, um, choose your partners carefully. Before you engage in anything, please go mm. through a HIV test. Mohimu. If you're getting a tattoo, Please do your homework properly. Ensure that the tattoo parlor is, is safe. Mm-hmm. Um, for COVID, of course, we have said all these things. Wear your mask, wash your hands, but most of all, get vaccinated. So what we are saying is that these okay. infections are there, mm-hmm. but there are things we can do to prevent them. Amen. I mean, yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> I have to say, I, I don't know. It's in the system. It's a toa sadaka. As I need toa sadaka. Thank you so much, Dr. Lydia, yeah. for finding me, uh, finding time to join me today. It's, 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 it's an honor. We have actually touched somebody today. Mm. I believe that from home, you have gotten something in regards to this particular conversation on infectious diseases. Let's mitigate it. Let's fight it. Let's reduce it. There is something you can do. There is something I can do. Exactly. Yeah. We all play a role in yeah. this. Mm-hmm. Asante sana, Dakari. Asante sana. Where can people find you if they want, if they want to get a hold of you? I'm at Amref. 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 Well, where we work to inspire the next generation of transformational healthcare leadership. Please come to Amref. We have mm-hmm. different courses that we are carrying out. Mm-hmm. We also have 
um, projects in different communities where we are supporting different communities, uh -huh. please come to Amre. Thank you so much. Yeah. Asante sana. Okay. Uh, from wherever you're watching us from, that brings us to the end of uh, this particular conversation on uh, awareness on infectious diseases, hoping that uh, you've learned one, two or three things. Surely I have. Uh, keep the conversation going on our social media platforms. We're taking a short break. We'll be back in a bit. Keep it right in the morning.